Megan, 1893, what were your initial thoughts? What a great year. If I could go back in time, Chicago World's Fair 1983 would definitely be a place that I would like to go. That would have been so interesting to see. 1893, 1893. not 1983. My bad. The one with the really big shoulders. Uh, I loved the opening, Mm -hmm. like the opening opening. Um, because the fire is obviously a, a cultural mark set in every American's mind. We learn about Mrs. O'Leary's cow, his little children. Um, so that certainly is a marker that we all know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I love the way they teased us. I, we know the book means, or we know something's in there. It looks like it's a book. We know it means something. Um, and I think most of us are aware that this uh, young African-American male is probably Kang. We don't know for sure, but probably Kang, which means something delicious is about to happen. And that's where 1893 is so delicious, Mm -hmm. because we see the flowering of him receiving the TVA book. And the uh, first of all, the exposition is just hugely another cultural icon in American history, uh, that event. Chicago at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, it, it, I really thought if I closed my eyes, I, I could almost see Howard Jarvis, uh, <laughs> doing that. And, mm-hmm. um, it turns out that that may not have been too far off that there may be some Howard, uh, Jar, uh, uh, Howard Stark, not Howard Jarvis, Howard Stark, Tony Stark, uh, interminglings with Kang at some point. So uh, that may Fun be down idea. the road. But yeah, how, I, I could see Howard Stark from sort of the 30s and, and the er, early Howard Stark we saw in the first Captain America. Uh, that kind of Howard Stark it would have mm-hmm. been so cool, not the Howard Stark of Endgame. Um, but um, I just love that scene. I love all of those sorts of Edison, Tesla, demonstrations at those world's fair fraudulent or not i don't care um <laughs> when i was uh in uh, fourth grade uh so i grew up going to church and i still remember our fourth grade sunday school teacher saying something to, to the effect that einstein one of einstein's theories i think special relativity Prove that the energy released by Abraham Lincoln when he gave the Gettysburg Address still existed. We just hadn't been able to capture it. And so for me, that has fascinated energy, electricity, and seeing all of those cool things, whether they're cool or not, uh, going forward. So it really, uh, that sort of uh, presentation at a World's Fair or exposition I think exactly is what happened and him. uh, Then it turns out maybe less scientist than business person. And uh, as we might say, American business person, uh, (laughs) certainly not Canadian business person being the queen's guard and all that you all are or were. Uh, Then we definitely uh, were. (laughs) Then you definitely were. Except in Quebec. Uh, Except in Quebec. It's, uh, It's true. But uh, so it turns out he's a huckster and he's just uh, getting this, uh, putting this up to to sell it. But it was, I thought, a a logical extension of what we saw in the opening scene from 1868 forward because uh, Victor Timely, and you you know, could not have asked for a better name, um, took that book and developed it up to that point. But you could see where, once again, it's not clear. Victor Timely becomes Kang, or He Who Remains, but certainly a variant within the multiverse world. And I know I've run on a lot there, so what were your thoughts? Well, I liked uh, a lot about it too. So, I mean, uh, the the world, like the book delivery scene where Renslayer and Miss Minutes are kind of talking about, you know, this is the plan. This is the thing that needs to be done. This is what's going to fix everything. I thought it was just really interesting. I loved the tiny little detail. Victor Timely, it looked like, was making candles. Uh, in in his home. I thought that was a a really fun little detail. Uh, And then when they come back to the World's Fair, um, I'd been thinking a lot about like, what is this 
uh, it was jarring, wasn't it, to see Miss Minutes kind of operating in the world so outside of the time appropriate to her animation style of TVA. I thought that was really fascinating. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting, which kind of I think comes up again and again for Kang was when he was doing his demonstration and he had all of these business people kind of bidding is like, you know, I want to be your partner. I want to take, you know, buy the patent rights and we'll, we'll work together. And he's just like, partner, no, but he was perfectly happy to sell the machine without you kind of agreeing to any partnership. And I think that comes up again later. I'm sure we'll get to this point when Miss um, Minutes is talking about her desire for different things in terms of her relationship with, uh, with he who remains or Victor timely. Um, isn't he just the most charming little character, Victor Timely? What a nice guy. Who would think he would become the lord and ruler of all creation? I thought he was charming. <laughs> I have to say I didn't see that one coming, Megan. Uh, charming? Well, kind of like, like, sort of a... Sort of a bumbling scientist type. Yeah, I bet that would be yes, really awkward uh, at a, a dinner party and would talk your ear off. And, but, true. you know, who knows what lurks out, beneath. Course, what lurks beneath. What I love was um, uh, Miss Manners uh, and the um, how she used her, I would say physical form, but it, I guess it was just visual to really, uh, she facilitated him getting away, but she used it in a conscious way, which I had not expected her uh, to be able to do. And it showed true independence of thought. And mm -hmm. really an evolution in her. And we're going to get to that evolution as we move towards the end of this episode. Um, but Renslayer reappears. And sh she and uh, Miss Manners are um, uh, trying to get Timely slash Kang um, back to the TBA. And, of course, Loki and Mobius are trying to get him back to the TBA for their own reasons. Um, so all of this, that that part to me felt almost slapstick-ish, but it was not played for comedy. The, the music um, choice was very, uh, it was really, really like caper music you would have heard from the, right. the 30s or 40s. I loved it. Right. So um, then uh, we move to the escape from Chicago and mm -hmm. the... Um, World's Fair, or it was actually the Columbia Exposition was his proper title. And uh, Renslayer is dumped in Lake Michigan. And that surprised me a little bit, but it showed a side of Kang we hadn't, or Timely, I should say, Victor Timely, we hadn't seen I, yet. So okay. I will point out, this was just after she had said she was very excited about their partnership. Yes, yes. <laughs> And he ended their partnership. He or did. Began. The he classic did. lifeboat move. Kids today <laughs> just ghost. <laughs> no class. And so we get to his um, uh, laboratory, which is just delicious. And um, I'm sorry, I've said Miss Manners twice. It's Miss Minutes. Miss Minutes. <laughs> yes. Um, but Sylvie arrives. And Sylvie, God bless her. In addition to just wanting to sell Big Macs, she wants to kill Kang. And uh, she doesn't care which variant. She doesn't care if he's a bumbling but cute and charming scientist or an evil warlord. She wants that sword to run th right through him. <laughs> so I'm beginning to sense kind of obsession here uh, with her. And it puts Mobius and Loki in the position of trying to protect him from her. Uh, while Miss Minutes uh, is also doing the same. But that led to a really interesting scene between Miss Minutes and Victor, which was she professes romantic feelings for him. Now, she, she's an AI created by him. So we'll start with that. Um, going back to, um, if I can be so bold, data and law. Uh, if you remember LOL, um, I think that's reasonable for an AI to evolve in that way. And she pointed out correctly that they were together through eons of time. And um, 
So I thought that was a, a really interesting little twist that they would have, you know, basically, I, I always go back to, what do I think of the computer who wants to become a person? Well, it's Pinocchio. Well, she's a girl, not a boy, but she wants to become human so she can experience human love. And I think that's where this is going. Even if you don't believe that, she professes romantic feelings for him. Um, he doesn't seem to me to be one who really has romantic partners of any sort, just like he doesn't have business partners. Um, so she may be barking up a, a tree there, but what were your thoughts around that? Really interesting to kind of just thinking about Miss Minutes and her desire for a body so specifically. Uh, and that was how kind of one thing, you know, she had this huge power, you know, massive computational ability, um, but couldn't have any kind of physical sensation of being in a body. And I wonder how much she conflated the desire for that with the desire for romantic love. Uh, and I wonder kind of how those things were interested. I thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, and I think, yeah, any anyone who gets too close or asks too much of he who remains is uh, going to quickly quickly be um if not eliminated if not eliminated or dispatched at least um put out of the way where they can no longer be causing any trouble or difficulty there's the the underlying ego there uh i guess is what is required to become lord and master of all of time uh yes and he turns off miss minutes and uh then uh sylvie allows loki and mobius to take uh timely back the TVA in an interestingly move, interesting move. She sends Renslayer to the Citadel at the end of time with Miss Manners. God, I'm minutes. sorry, <laughs> Miss Minutes. And um, uh, they see he who remains the King corpse as Miss Minutes uh, lays the foundation for something I think is going to be delicious, which is she knows a secret about Renslayer. Um, you may know the answer to that. I don't at this point, but I just loved that uh, as well. In addition to now, we have him back at the TVA, and who knows what havoc he will wreak. I thought it was kind of a one thing that was a bit of a question for me in the episode is is um, I guess Sylvie must not have known that Renslayer had a tempad with Miss Minutes access because otherwise, sending her to the Citadel at the end of time was a rather ineffective final solution for her <laughs> because she can just go back to the TVA. Um, but no, I, I agree with you and I won't um, uh, spoil the delicious information that will make Renslayer very, very angry that we were teased with at the end of the episode. Um, I thought that everyone's kind of shifting motivation throughout this episode was really interesting. So you've got, um, you know, Mobius and Loki who need the time aura of Victor Timely in order to fix the time loom to save the multiple timelines. You've got Renslayer and Miss Minutes, who had been working so hard to try and get the sacred timeline reestablished under control of um, uh, He Who Remains. And then you've got Victor Timely, uh, kind of the the original, uh, you know, uh, He Who Remains before he remained. Uh, so that just really, and he just wanted to make some money. <laughs> he just wanted to make a buck. Well, I, actually, I think you hit it on the head uh, and crystallized my thinking. This was a caper show. It was a caper episode. And it was a caper episode. And Great costumes. The, certainly the costumes, the period piece, the bumbling scientists, the uh, chase by the bad guys slash robber barons, the uh, Miss, Miss Minutes uh, using her visual form to scare people off. Uh, the escape and then to, to look sexy as a cartoon. A little weird. As, uh, well, I didn't find it weird uh, <laughs> at all. <laughs> but I'm a boy, so, you know, you can just chalk it up to that. Um, the, um, but yeah, it was a great caper. It, it had so many different elements that were touched on and so much fun. We saw some great banter with uh, Loki and Mobius again. Mm. Uh, they, there's a real chemistry between those two actors that I've really enjoyed. I'm, I'm beginning to sense a chemistry. I don't, um, I I don't want to say an inverse chemistry, but I mean a chemistry with Sylvie 
recognizing her single-minded focus that she wants to kill Kang. Mm -hmm. And that it's like, oh, she's back. No, 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 no. Little sister, don't do this. You're going to be in solid trouble. So, uh, yeah, I really but, uh, enjoyed this she, episode. She yeah, she she let him go with Mobius she and didn't... Loki. So, Yeah. So uh, all in all, uh, for me, just a ton of fun. I agree. And uh, whether you call it Back to the Future Loki or whether you call it the Loki Caper episode <laughs> or uh, something else, uh, I, I highly recommend. Final thoughts, Megan? No, I think you just about uh, covered everything. This, uh, this is a good one, and I'm really excited to uh, talk about episode four. Well, uh, I am Tom Fox. I'm Megan Doherty. See you next time. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Because That's What Heroes Do. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Because That's What Heroes Do is now the award-winning Because That's What Heroes Do, having been awarded a Communicators Award for Outstanding Podcasts in Current Events. I hope you'll join Megan and I again next time where we take up Loki Season 2, Episode 4. We look forward to visiting with you again.